Highlander ideas three. Okay. Now, this is a project potentially for eternity. Uh, life in the next life in heaven. I've had some chattings from God which has pointed out some points occasionally about why eternal life on earth is all a lovely thing and potentially achievable it's probably not really meant to be it's not what's gone on it's possibly not really meant to be the main plan which probably is just retirement based on the idea that you probably don't need endless amounts of stuff you don't really need endless amounts of stuff for your for your eternity you need a solid amount and that's about it and because of that you don't really need to go on living for abundance it's not really required you don't need to go on living endless experiences a human life doesn't need that much it doesn't need it the uh it's potentially achievable for a long period of time and perhaps even permanently but it's just not really needed you don't need that for satisfaction or any sort of you just don't need it too many eggs in too many baskets it's just not really needed for a human life don't need to do that so um, because of that the idea is that uh, these this project this Highlander project and a lot of my a lot of my story projects is Daniel Daly writer uh, author video producer YouTube creator um, my projects are um, probably focused on eternity uh, heaven when you die I'm a religious man I'm a believer in God I'm a believer in the Bible heaven when you die so that um, the Highlander stuff is not meant to be on earth and uh, with Christopher Lamb and Sean Connery in, in 2019 or 2020 or 2021 anything like that it's meant to be when our generation, you know, the 50s, the 20th century, 21st century dudes, we've carked and we've gone off to the great beyond, the other side, and, uh, how's your father? Life goes on with the project's blessings. So it's a heavenly project, is what I'm saying. All this sh shit which I'm shitting on about, uh, my Chronicles and Children Destiny, all this sort of stuff, it's mostly a heavenly project. My Noahidism, for the most part, is a heavenly project. It's not really too concerned with worried about winning the world terribly much. It does, it's done in the real world, but I don't really give much of a shit about trying to win a, a soul any time quick to my religion. It's a long contemplation of a long fucking period of time. So, um, these projects, all my movie projects and story projects, and why don't bother even bothering with spell check? Because I couldn't be bothered trying to get it released yet. Okay, you understand? This is just the raw product. Okay. So Highlander, this project is just the raw product. Okay. Now. The Highlander project is, um, that this is Highlander Ideas, is concerned with the first four Highlander movies. And this project is placed as what I, in what I would call Highlander Alpha. And the Highlander, Highlander Alpha Generation. And uh, the Alpha Generation is the Connor McLeod generation of Highlander movies. Highlander 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, Highlander 5, The Source, and Highlander 6, The Watchers, that's not Conor McLeod. So, the Highlander Alpha generation is Conor McLeod's generation. So, that's what I would conceive it as, of it as. The Alpha generation of the Highlander movies. Highlander 1 to 4. 5 and 6, well, I guess that's beta generation. I suppose you would call that beta generation. This is my titles for it. 
So this Highlander Ideas project is Highlander Alpha, and it's set with the canon of 1, 2, 3, and 4 in mind. Now, um, we're keeping in mind 5 and 6, the basic ideas which I have of that, and the basic idea of the Highlanders still coming to Earth and fighting it out, which is going on in 5 and 6, is uh, already addressed in this first video that I've got, where... Uh, it's a project of Zeist to send others also to Earth to fight it out as well. Zeist is also doing that as well. So, whatever. So, um, and whatever happens in Highlander after that, that's a project of Zeist, which is from from the Zeist perspective. That's just Zeist going on in our general understanding of the Highlander ideas. So it's Highlander Generation Alpha. And it deals with the canon of the first four movies. And it sets its framework of movie and entertainment and uh, knowledge and uh, the, the plot, the, the stuff going on within the framework of the first four movies. So that it's set probably a bit after Endgame. Uh, the, this scene with the scholar is set a bit after Endgame in the history of the, the Highlander universe. And he's dealing with these, um, the bloke from the fourth movie as well, the adversary. I haven't seen Highlander 4 yet, so I don't know much about it. I've seen one, two, and three years ago. But the bloke from the fourth movie, I'll have to check that out and see how that works out. And, uh, they're being, the adversaries are being brought back to Zeist to be dealt with, to be taught some lessons in their place in the Zeist hierarchy of society and it's a quite a big hierarchy of society there's a lot of old Zeist men and women who run the show and they deal with these younger Zeist people they're not just 50 60 70 years old probably they're probably many centuries of years of age even millennia potentially of older Zeist citizens and uh, these rebels are just younglings who are finding their sense of adventure in the world and um, the, the project with this counsellor, uh, he's having to deal with Kurgan and the other bad boys. And uh, he's got a plot in mind involving, involving them and McLeod and Ramirez. And there's probably even Brenda. She's probably going to be drawn to Zeist as well. So she's probably going to be brought up to Zeist uh, as a companion of McLeod and Ramirez. And I think gradually Duncan McLeod would probably have to be brought into it as well. So that's sort of what's going on with Highlander Alpha. Uh, 